Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. Look behind me. Look at all these gorgeous blooms. Doesn't this just bring some cheeriness to your day? Like, I think they're so vibrant and so beautiful. It's a little windy out here today. But anyways, I came on here because I'm going to bring you along and I wanted to show you these gorgeous tulips behind me and then the little um, purple Bakari tulips that are around my uh, crepe myrtle trees that are so pretty right now. And then I got some gorgeous daffodils that were not blooming before when I gave my um, spring bulb tour. So I'm excited about that. And I got some annuals that I bought from Wilson's and I'm going to go ahead and get them in the ground. I got that new Superbina. Uh, pink cashmere that is brand new on the market this year so i'm really excited to see how well that's going to do in my garden and in the very front here i'm going to do the mini vista white and i'm going to do the mini vista white versus the uh super tunia because it's going to stay a little bit more compact and not going to be like all ruly where i'm going to have to constantly cut right here in the front yard and then i'm going to um accent it with the jazzberry and the um, superbina cashmere and that new uh, hoopla, uh, whatever it's called, it's hoopla something, new petunia that, that's coming out this year. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm gonna wait just maybe another week or so before I get those and do the front because I want these uh, gorgeous tulips to kinda do their thing before I remove those from the ground and um, get my annuals in. But anyways, I can go ahead and start on the west side and I got some gorgeous daffodils over there that I wanna show you and everything is popping up and is gorgeous and is coming to life here in the springtime. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and I'm gonna share everything with you. All right, guys, here's the very front flower bed. This is the Lemony Remedy from Color Blends and isn't it gorgeous? Cheerful, definitely lemony, so that's where it's got its name. And I love these pansy blends that are down below it too. Just absolutely gorgeous. It all came good together. Very excited. Now these um, tulips right here were the very last ones to uh, pop out and start to bloom because we get less sun here. This is the north facing of my house. So that's why I still have some gorgeous tulips hanging on right now. Where some of you guys just probably have completely ended your tulip season and then many of you are starting your tulip season. So very exciting. So I have um, Instagram and Facebook. And on Instagram, you can send me pictures. I would love, 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 love for you guys to send me your tulip picture. So make sure you like me on Instagram as well and send me some of your tulip pictures. I would love to see them. Look at this white one right here, just saying, hello. Hello, I'm so pretty. I'm so happy to see you today. So gorgeous, you guys. I am loving it. Beautiful. I love everything about everything, <laughs> if that makes sense. So in a couple of weeks, we're gonna be able to pull these out. I'll completely remove all of them, and then we'll put in our annuals. Like I said, I'm gonna do this year because I really want to still kind of show off my um, hedge of my sprinter boxwoods and the um, little tulberry boxwoods as well as the Japanese maple there. So I'm gonna do nothing but white, and then I'm gonna put some pink cashmere in just to give it that little bit of pop of softness color and then we are going to accent with, with that jazzberry and a hoopla color it's a different name to it i'll throw it up on the screen but anyways i'm very very excited to get my annuals in the ground but in the meantime i am loving this are you guys loving this isn't it beautiful can you guess how many tulips are in here so actually when i planted these tulips i just dug a trench and put all my bulbs in and that's how I planted all of these. So if you wanna get this mass effect like I have right now, then you can just dig the trench. Now this area right here has been worked up like several times, so it wasn't very hard for me to dig the trench. But there is over, I'm gonna say 
I bought 600 tulips of this blend and I shared it with the front and then around my trees. So I think maybe I put 50 and 50. So I'm gonna say maybe 500 gorgeous tulip blends right here in the very front. So pretty. And I'm just loving these big tall white ones that just kinda of peer over top the yellow. Love it. I got my spring pillows up there on my rocking chairs. I still have my Easter bunny wreaths on the windows over there. I like to change that out each season. Let's take a little closer look at these gorgeous blooms here. Look how pretty. You guys, look inside. Do you not like love to look inside? your blooms to look how beautiful everything is. I do. You just get a whole new different perspective of what the flower looks like up close. And then over here on the side is where we're going to work at today. So I wanted to share with you all the gorgeous daffodils that I have right now. Look at these blooms you all. I went ahead and cut a lot of them to take inside so I can enjoy. This is a double bloom. And these white parrots, they're, they kind of looked cool, but they're just kind of like crazy. I'm not sure if I would want to buy this blend again. I'm not like loving it personally. I mean, it's okay, but like most white flowers in the garden, when they start to turn, they just get this kind of ugly white on there so i'm not sure if i'd buy that blend again and then if you hear the mower behind me everybody's thinking why is everybody mowing well our sod you have to get all the old foliage off because everything that you see like let me show you like this right here this will never turn green. So you gotta scalp it and get all of this sod off. So if you're new to, um, in a brand new home and you don't know how to take care of sod, do you see how it's starting to green up right here? Well, that's where all the new green comes from. So you gotta get all this brown off and scalp it. So take your mower all the way to the very lowest level that you can get and get all this brown off right here. So that, that is why you're hearing someone mowing right now. My husband was talking to somebody and another couple was kind of like laughing a little bit like, oh, I didn't know it was time to mow. And he was telling her like, no, you're supposed to scalp it and get all this dead off. See how pretty that is, you guys. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Like I said, I've already cut some to bring inside. And then I cut some for my neighbor, Cindy, so I could take to enjoy for Easter this weekend and then these are the uh super venas that i already have laid out right here so this is a proven winners and it's an annual right here this is called a grande let me get this and this is the super vena pink cashmere and it only gets if I can hang on to it it only gets 6 to 12 inches tall right there and this is what it's gonna look like real soft colors and they said it's, it's gonna be like a pretty vigorous nice plant so it's a mounding to trailing plant and then after frost you can plant but these are a little bit more hardy to cold weather right now it stays short so that's why I'm going to put it closer up to the border here so we can we can see it and don't have anything over have it overgrown. Um, last year my bubble gums got overgrown by my a potato vine last year. So and then it's an annual in uh, zones 8A to 11. So I am an 8. So I'm going to try to keep this in the ground and not pull up all the roots and then that way I may get another um, flush next year. So it may be a perennial for me. Exciting! 
Isn't that exciting? So this looks like a good, healthy plant, and it's gonna be really pretty, pretty with all those little um, light pink and uh, like just different variations of pink on there. I think it's gonna be really, really pretty. Exciting, exciting. So yeah, so I have, I bought two flats of this, so I bought 20. So I'm not gonna put all 20 here, but I try to space them apart pretty good and then I'm gonna come back I do have some extra jazzberry that I'm going to put in here and I wanted to pair these with some of the new uh, yellow French uh, finch yellow finch uh, super petunias or super super tunia yeah so you can see this is it's really windy today too guys but I just want to get some of this stuff done and then um, this is the jazzberry that I was gonna accent in the front and I had three left over. So I'm gonna put the three here. Now this is a very vigorous plant right here. So this one is a Super Tunia Vista. The Super Tunia Vista is the most vigorous of all. They have this Vista, they have the bubble gum and they have a white too. And I believe that is all the colors that they have. So this will get um, 12 to 24 inches tall, but um, Jenny says, and from my experience last year, it can get to two to three feet wide. So pretty exciting about that. And this one is an annual for me. Let's see if it says that it is. So it says annual in zones 10A to 11B. Now I'm in zone eight and some, some of them come back for me and then some don't. So I guess it just depends on what kind of protection they have. And then this says it's a mounding trailing habit as well. So like I said, these are a little bit more cold hardy than um, some of the other more tender annuals, I guess you'd want to say. So I got three of those and then I'm going to um, use the, uh, sorry, the yellow finch, the new yellow finch too. All right, and then I have a different blend of pansies up here. This is more of a rose color, but you can see it's just got lots and lots of different types of varieties on here too. Like I said, I need to come and deadhead some of these. If you like take some of these old blooms off like this right here, then they will like flush out with more blooms. So I need to kind of come and tidy these up just a little bit here just like so if you're feeling it you don't have to but like I said you just get more more blooms if you do that so it's relaxing I think this is relaxing <laughs> I just need to get my little seat bucket and come out here and just Snip some of these off. See how much prettier that looks after getting all the dead, dead blooms off around it. See how much nicer it looks. All right, so I'm gonna use my power planter auger and we're gonna go super, super fast. I've already had tulips all in here, so that means that the ground's already worked up a little bit and not as hard, so it should be pretty easy to plant. I'm going to throw some compost in there and I'm gonna throw some of the uh, fertilizer from Proven Winners. It's a, uh, a um, long-term soluble, no, it's not long-term. I'll show you the picture when I use it though. So like I said, I'm gonna grab my auger and I have, I think maybe 12 to 15 plants here that I'm gonna get planted today. Look at this, this is a different, prettier blend right here. How gorgeous. I really do need to give this area some attention. These are so pretty. Look at this right here. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. This down here has more of a creamy color on it. Got kind of sad looking though. 
have some new ones coming out. All right, so let me go grab my auger. Do you guys want to see before I grab my auger what this side's looking like? I think you do. So let's come down here and let's just do like a little garden tour. So this is some kind of sage that Dawn thinks it's a weed, but I'm pretty sure it's a sage. Look, it's about ready to bloom. So she kept on calling it a weed. I'm like, I know I planted something here. I think it's a Jerusalem sage. And then my roses are looking really good. I think this is something that came back from last year. I'm not really sure what this is, but we'll take a free plant. And then my um, David Austin roses. I think this one is called the Munstead Wood. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And then right here is the, uh, well, it says double coated raspberry beret. It must be planted in here somewhere else because that's not it. That's the butter pecan that's coming up. But this right here is serendipity. And I replanted those last year and I got three of those. And then I have sage coming up right here. And then my Clematis is coming up and it's starting to climb up this obelisk right there. So my theory, let me back up and just kind of show you. My theory was to have four roses. One, two, three, and four over there. All surrounding this obelisk. And then I've got four of the sage that are around that, which is going to be purple, and then two clematis growing up the obelisk right there. So in my mind, I think it's going to be pretty. So we'll see how it plays out, and I think it's going to start to fill out this year because this bed right here, you guys, was brand new last year. Can you believe it? Like, it was brand new just last year. To me, I think that's incredible what I've created and what I've done in here and how much I've planted. So I have some hens and chicks in here. Look at this. This one's brand new. Hens and chicks are doing good. This is the lemon coral sedum. Like I could just touch this all day long. It's soft. It feels so awesome. And then the David Austin Rose, the Munstead Wood. It's a real deep, deep uh, red one. It's the reddest of the red. And then that is my Winter Daphne up there. And then I have some Salvia right there that I replanted last year. And then I have some creeping tall phlox right there. And oh, you guys, like, look at this. This Amsonia. The um, storm cloud Amsonia is starting to bloom. Let me bring you a little closer. So this is storm cloud Amsonia, and I didn't think that it was going to do last do good last year. When I planted this, it did good, but in the fall it was supposed to turn like this gorgeous yellow, and I was so excited to see it, and it did nothing. Like I thought it died, and the only thing that saved it was it did not want to pull up easy, so I just left it. But it's supposed to have like star-shaped blooms on there. Look at that. There's just one, but it is going to be so pretty when all of these start to bloom out. Now, when it came out, it was like dark, real dark foliage. So almost like a storm. So that's why it's called Storm Cloud. And this is an Amsonia. So I'm very excited. I've got three. One here and then two on the other side of the garden. Look at this daffodil, you guys. This is a double bloom too. So pretty. Let's see if I can find the name of it for you. This one is called Apricot Whirl. So I do need to come back with a copper tag. Apricot Whirl. And unlike tulips, these will come back for me. So I will leave these in the ground and they will parentalize and get like more and more each year. Now, unfortunately, like I like 
like a bouquet of type of flowers. So I planted at least 10 in each grouping. So that's, if you see like little groupings, that's how I achieved, I put 10 bulbs in one area. My limelight standard hydrangea tree is starting to come out with leaves. And then like, look you guys. So I have this one right outside my living room window right here. And that way when I'm inside my living room, I can see these blooms from outside. And that saves me from looking at this house right here. So kind of think about that. Like how are you gonna view your garden when you're looking out the window? So that's something to think about too. And then my um, pink dianthesis, which kind of looks like lilac is starting to bloom out too and this one has spread quite a bit for me look at that bloom there so this is a big clumping right here so it's going to be really really pretty when it starts to um, bloom out now i like this dianthesis a little bit better because i think the other one looks more like a carnation and that one's not really my favorite most favorite flower is a carnation but I like the foliage on this. You can see like, see this is the tall phlox right here. Look at the foliage against this. See how it stands out. This is more silverishy and small like leaves. And then this one is more deeper green. But just, that's how you start to pair different textures against each other. And then that right there, I think is my, um, salvia from last year so that was actually a perennial I mean an annual and came back for me too and then I've got some corms that are coming up here I think this were these were called um, liatris I believe and they're purple liatris and that is a an anemone that I replanted that seems to be doing well right there I got some foxglove right there that I planted last year that I'm going to get blooms out of this year. did not get last year. And this one right here is called Papa. Look how pretty that is. It's a double daffodil as well. And I got these from Dutch Grown if you're interested. Dutch Grown are all where all these bulbs came from. And I planted these, I ordered them in October, and then I planted them in, I think the end of December is when I planted them. So some of the cone flowers are starting to come out right there. And then this is my uh, Budlia butterfly bush. It's looking really good. And then the same pot pie right here in bloom and then that is that anemone that I told you that I planted and this is an, a, um, it's a hydrangea it's called tough stuff tough stuff hydrangea so I'm excited about that that has pink blues and purples on it mm, gosh not sure what that is that's another butterfly bush and then I think that up there is um, maybe some Gara. And then you can see I've already got a bud coming on the uh, foxglove right there. And then this right here, these flowers, I love this. This is so pretty this year. This is my yin and yang viburnum. Look, you guys. this viburnum is it's not a very big flower as you can see with my fingers right there but boy when you look close up it is so so pretty and I can just go on and on with these little blooms loving it loving 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 it and I do have a yin and a yang I have two and you have to have both in order for them to produce these little flowers and some kind of berries and this is the uh, foxglove right there. I'm thinking this, what was 
was this? Mm, I split it, whatever it was. I'm thinking it might be, no, I'm confused. I don't even know what I put there. But I did, whatever, I replanted it there and I did, I split it. I did here and there. And then this is my salvia that came back from last year. As you can see, this is the stem from it. So that's that blue salvia. And I'm telling you guys, the uh, bumblebees loved, loved the salvia. Another butterfly bush. And then all these daffodils here in the center. This is my Ruby Slippers um, Hydrangea too. I'm really excited about that. I think that's gonna be really pretty. That's my only hydrangea that I have like this. It's a uh, oak leaf hydrangea. And it's called oak leaf because these look like oak, oak leaves on a tree. You can tell I need to cut some of these back that already are spent. And then some of these have like two blooms on it. Look, these are just a little bit more dainty little daffodils. Uh, trying to find a tag on these. I don't see my tag right off the bat yet. And I bought so many different types of daffodils. And then I planted these around my hardy hibiscus. These are lilacs. So I knew that these weren't gonna be in bloom when these were. So when these are all cut back, then these lilacs are gonna be blooming out as well. And I've got three lilac hardy hibiscus in here. So another grouping of the pink dianthesis right there. You can see my drip. I do have drip in here and these are going to be some daylilies. I think they're like a bright orange. Excited about that. And then these are a different type of daffodil as well. Look at that you all. So pretty. That's the other yin or yang. I can't tell you which one it is. And then I have some columbine that's orange. Let's take a look at this columbine. I had some purple over in my cottage garden. And you guys, this is a big presence in your garden too. Look at that columbine. So, if you like columbine, you might want to put it in the back of your garden. And then growing up on this uh, little trellis is the uh, honeysuckle from Proven Winners. I did not cut that back. I'm so glad that I didn't. And then my azalea's blooming right there. I just don't have really good luck with azaleas. I don't know why. And this is the other yin and yang, but this not really came out yet. This area gets less sun than the other. And then look at my um, rose here. That's a David Austin rose, and this is a rambling rose, and it is called, called floss on the mill you guys I have to look it up every single time I'm definitely gonna put a plant tag there so I won't have to like forget every single time like I don't know why I can't never remember this flower this um, rose right there but you guys like I pruned that back pretty hard and look at all the new growth on there it's gonna be so pretty come late April or May I have some gardenias that were newly planted. I bought three of those. And that's the salvia that I told you that came back last year. That was an annual. Let's look at this tag. So you guys get rocking playing the blues if you can. And it gets tall and every time you cut it back, if it gets out of control, you cut it back and it just comes back in no time. So let's see what the hardiness zone is. 
oh, yep. Yeah. It's an annual except in zones seven through 10. So that's definitely why it comes back. So don't pull your um, Play in the Blues salvia up from Proven Winners. So you know, not so bad when you get a $7 annual and it comes back as a perennial, right? It's not bad at all. And then this is a Sweet Spire. And then there's the other two Amsonia that I told you that almost got yanked up out of the out of the um, ground last year. Luckily it didn't come up easy. Here's that Amsonia up closer. Super, super excited. And then look at this daffodil, you guys. Isn't that so pretty? Like sometimes simple is very pretty too. Look at the ruffles, the ruffly peach around it. I'm trying to find the name on that one. hard time finding it though. And then I have some more of the um, serendipity alliums. They're going to have like a purple flower on it that's like a ball. It's going to be so pretty. And then look at my son uh, Hosta you guys. Look how pretty that is. Look at the foliage on that. Love it. These are hard to find. If I find more I'm going to definitely get me some more of those. And then another limelight standard hydrangea tree. And then a climbing rose up there. And that is called Lady of the Lake. It's a real smaller bloom. Not very many petals on that one, but the bees love this one. All right, and there's a look at the West Garden. You just got a garden tour of this West Side. And then we already talked about our annuals that we're going to get put in the ground. And I'm going to set the camera up and you're going to watch me plant all 10. How fast do you think I can plant 10? I bet it won't take me long. All right, you guys, it took me 19 minutes. 19 minutes to make over 15 holes with my power planter. And I put the slow release fertilizer in it from Proven Winners. 
because it does really, really well and it makes, um, it gives it six months worth of food. So we need food, plants need food. <laughs> and they have lots of friends here in the garden too, you guys. They're gonna have lots and lots of friends, don't you think? <laughs> and so we all need friends. So yes, plants need multiple, multiple friends, just like we do. And what else did I do? I put fertilizer in it. I put biotone in it because I never skipped that step, even with annuals, because yes, it does make a difference. And then I threw a couple, I didn't have any uh, land and sea, I ran out. So I put um, potting soil in there. It, it goes in the either, it goes in, blah, blah, it goes in the ground or in a container. So yes, 19 minutes. And then I got everything watered too, you guys. And do you see, like, um, you'll see at the in, end of this video that all, um, I got my uh, hose reel from um, Giraffe, and I have a link to that if you're interested. I love, 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 love my um, garden reel. I would not want to do without it. And I know they have uh, other lots of good brands out there too, but I got this one on Amazon, and I have the link for that if you'd like to um, check that out. And I'll show you when I reel it up how easy it is. And I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe my videos because every time you like, it sends it out to the YouTube world that this video is a good video and it helps me out tremendously, you guys. I need help. I need your help. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Like I said, I have more than 80,000 people that watch. Not 80,000. 80%. I wish I had 80,000 people. 80% 80 of people that watch my channel that have not subscribed. So I want to see that improve this month, you guys, like, help me out. And like I said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends. It's hard to do it with one hand. I needed two hands. <laughs> Anyways, there's my giraffe garden reel.